A very good evening. You're watching Big Bang with me, Shruti. Just the other day, we brought to you the news of a BMTC bus running over three people and killing one of them. Looks like they have started to like the killer tag. Once again, there has been a deadly accident involving the BMTC. Take a look at the condition of this bike. And if you take a look at the road, you can see the parts of the bike all over the place. When you see a damaged vehicle like this, you surely know it's a major accident. This was what was witnessed in front of the CID office signal in Bengaluru. Two friends from Hegade Nagar, Shahrukh and Mubarak were traveling on this bike when the deadly accident took place. It is believed that the duo jumped the signal and took off while a speeding BMTC bus rammed into them. The bus which was travelling from Majestic hit the motorist causing a high impact and the end result was deadly. Both Shahrukh and Mubarak were bleeding from the head and also sustained severe injuries in the leg. The high grounds police stationed near the signal rushed the duo to a nearby hospital without wasting any time. Mubarak, who sustained serious injuries to his head, could not be saved and died at the hospital. While Shahrukh is battling for his life in the ICU. This happened on Martana, market. Residents of Hegade Nagar, 22-year-old Mubarak and 18-year-old Sharuk worked as florists. And on this fateful day, the two were en route to the market to buy flowers like usual. But fate had a different plan for them. The boys who usually use an auto to go and purchase the goods decided to take their friend's bike for the ride today. One can say that the duo could have avoided the untoward incident had they followed traffic rules and did not jump the signal. Meanwhile, the police are also checking if the BMTC was overspeeding during the crash. The high grounds police who have taken up the case are investigating the matter. Manjunath CR for News 9, Bengaluru. There is a big dilemma over mayor's tenure and the present first citizen of Bengaluru is in no mood to give up his chair. He's even contemplating knocking on the doors of court if efforts are not stopped on curbing his tenure. Mayor writes a letter to Chief Minister. Requests completion of his tenure. Commissioner prepares to take on mayor. One may recall that recently the BBMP commissioner had written a letter to the government seeking information on mayor's tenure. According to the commissioner, the tenure of the present mayor should end on April 14, taking into consideration the first council meeting that was held after the Palike elections. On the other hand, the incumbent mayor claims that there are still four months left for the completion of his tenure. He says that the previous mayor, Venkatesh Murthy's tenure was extended by four months thanks to pending case in the court. Hence, the present mayor, B.S. Satyanarayana, argues that those four months should not be added to his tenure. He wrote a letter to the Chief Minister on 4th of April and referred KMC Act 10-1, which states that one year term for mayor starts from the day he assumes office, hence his tenure should not be curtailed. The commissioner has written the letter to the uh, uh, government at what time we are going to uh, conduct the mayor election and also the what category basis. That's why I am written the letter to the CM office and then UD principal secretary uh, to uh, give the justice for me because I am uh, occupying the chair in September 4th at that uh, uh, September 4th in KMC Act uh, 10 bar 2 itself uh, amendment uh, in the 10 bar 2 so one year is the mayor term is clearly in that amendment now no, I will request to the um, government Give me the opportunity to serve the one year for the mayor post. But BBMP officials are considering the date of elections held for Palike for calculating the tenure. 
If they go by it, the terms of mayor, deputy mayor and standing committees need to be curtailed. Hence, the commissioner has written a letter to the government and sought the direction. Yeah, there is a little confusion regarding the election of the mayor. The earlier notification issued four years back by government states that election of the mayor shall be held every April. But subsequently, elections were not held in April. It was held in different different uh, months due to court intervention. Uh, now, since it is the month of April, I need to receive clarification from government whether I should conduct the election in the month of May, April or I should wait until the completion of one year. So this clarification has gone to the government and government has referred the matter to law department. After getting clarification from law department, I will be communicated by government when I should conduct the election. Well, the game is truly on between the mayor and BBMP officials. The ruling party cooperators are alleging to be rallying around mayor's chair. Meanwhile, the mayor has made it clear that he would knock on the doors of the court if efforts are made to curtail his tenure. Pramod for News 9, Bengaluru. Whenever BDA plans to constructing a new layout, it invites controversies. History seems to be repeating frequently for BDA. The issues pertaining to Arkadati layout are yet to die down, but the BDA is all set to take up another mega project on the outskirts of Bengaluru. In fact, BDA had contemplated constructing Shivaram current layout some time back and conducted a survey across 80 villages falling under the ambit of its plan. Now that the survey is over, BDA is preparing a plan for the same. BDA has already conducted a survey in villages on either side of Dudbalapur Road and we have received a report as well. According to the report, land in the area is fit for construction of a layout. Hence, a letter will be sent to the government seeking its permission to acquire 3,800 acres of land. As expected, the villagers coming under the proposed plan have expressed dissent and discontent. The Riot Sangha has alleged that the government is snatching land from innocent farmers under the guise of development. Land acquisition and the annual theory are the Nakaibidabeko. Land requisition in the Mele Prarambagbeko. Yakandre, appeal Madi, Raitrinda, Aurike Korta Kanta, Saula Tagalana Kotu, Nivu, Markate Daradeli, our Bumi and the Kelbeke or two, notice Jari Madi, Namige Beko, now Mutugo Lakantivi, Kanun in a Krama Idu and Teli, Yellow Dadre. Either the Yaude Karnake, Sutra Mopa de Kesadela, Bumi Kodliko Sadela, either the Viroda Martave, Bidi Eduru, Tak part of the Kalibekagate and the Echerke Matu Nukodayat. Well, the BDA is excited about its new project and waiting for the elections to conclude to go ahead with its plan. But it will not be smooth sailing given the discontent of the farmers. Pramod, News 9, Bengaluru. Well, we are familiar with movie scenes where the concerned authorities always arrive after the drama. BBMP seems to have taken a cue from this. They too seem keen on acting, act taking action after the damage is done. Take a look at these trees. Some so old that you can see them almost uprooted from the surface. While few others are so dangerously leaning towards the road that they could fall any time. There are several such trees in Bengaluru that are in need of immediate attention. However, the BBMP doesn't seem to notice them. Take a look at some of them while the BBMP too can conquer. Now this is an age-old tree at the Mysore Bank Circle. You can see the roots of this tree popping dangerously out of the ground. A strong gust and the tree can go kaput on the ground. Well, this is just the beginning of the list. Now take a look at this tree near the Baswangudi Pre-University College. Termites seem to have built several colonies inside the trunk of this tree and soon they may be planning a big party once they manage to make it fall. But the BBMP doesn't want to spoil the termite party. Next is this tree near the Reserve Bank building. Half the tree has already succumbed to age and is diseased. It's only a matter of time before the entire tree is seen on the ground. Now all these trees may pose some serious threats to thousands of pedestrians and motorists passing by each day. All these trees are in such a state that a strong wind accompanied with some rain can seal their fate along with it can also cause some serious damage to people and objects around. These trees are also damaging the footpaths as the roots are surfacing through them. The BBMP however seems ignorant of this and will probably wait till disaster strikes. 
Just a few days ago, an old tree such as the ones we are talking about fell on a parked car injuring three people. While there is a department in the BBMP which is in charge of clearing the debris once the tree has fallen, they do not have the authority to bring down the damaged and the old ones. The rainy season is nearing and the chances of such trees crashing down look very likely. We got in touch with the BBMP regarding this and here is what they had to say. We are locating the old and worn out trees in the city. We have already deployed a team from the BBMP's forest department to chop down such trees. From the past few days, we have been identifying such trees. We will bring down the old and rotting trees before the monsoon begins. Well, we just hope that they will do what they claim they will and it just doesn't remain in words. We are not for cutting down trees, but it is vital that these trees are maintained and the old ones are removed to avoid human and material damage. Anand Burali for News 9, Bengaluru.